Jurgen Peters is the general manager of a company called BHTC, and we'll get into a bit more of the company, but Jurgen, number one, great to see you. Hey, John, great to see you too. Hope you're well, fine. Yeah, we're, we're going to be talking about this 3D display that you've got for cars, but let me, let me tell people a little bit about BHTC. Company's been around a little over 20 years. It was started as a 50 50 joint venture between Bayer and Hella, uh, making climate control, thermal management, and HMI systems. And that's what we want to talk about today the HMI. You've got to tell us about this 3D display that you've got because I haven't seen anything else like it before in cars. Yeah, th thank you, John. Uh, thanks, by the way, for the opportunity to talk about it uh, with you. That's pretty exciting. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, like you said, the company has started 20 years ago and uh, the traditional products, uh, they still have a, a market presence and a future, but uh, equally we have also a new area which we uh, some years ago entered, which is the HMI area. Display technology, uh, haptic feedback, uh, touch functions and so on. And our latest innovation is the 3D uh, demonstrator, which we were able to show you some, some weeks ago. And um, that's pretty exciting. So it has a lot of uh, technologies uh, included. Uh, and one of our strengths are the, uh, is the system integration of different technologies. We obviously work with uh, many partners in the industry. And um, yeah, so basically what it does, it provides uh, a very brilliant high resolution uh, 2D image and it has several technologies included such as a, uh, a camera which tracks your eyes. And with the eye tracking we can, uh, and the, you know, the logic attached to it, the software attached to it, we can switch from a 2D image to a very high resolution brilliant uh, 3D image. And um, that's basically uh, what this uh, technology or this demonstrator is, is all about. And the other main enabling technology uh, we have integrated is a, uh, what we call a mid-air haptic. And um, uh, what, how it's working, it's, uh, there's an array of uh, uh, ultrasonic transducers uh, integrated into the console and uh, time of flight camera, um, which uh, detects your the motion of the of your hand towards the display and then depending on in which screen you are you uh, basically have the ability to touch certain functions or trigger certain functions in the display without touching the display and that's pretty cool and uh, on top of that it gives you a sensation in your fingers uh, based on the transmission of the ultrasound towards your your fingers and in the moment you are actually touching a certain button uh, or a slider, whatever it is, uh, you will then in, feel in your fingers the sensation of actually touching something. And that's sensational. So we believe that with this display, we have revolutionized once again the in-vehicle uh, HMI technology. Yeah, you're good. What, what I, and you're right, I, I did see it just before the, the whole shutdown came right. because of the coronavirus crisis which of course is why we're doing this all remotely right now. But what I was intrigued about is everybody watching this video knows about 3D movies, but you have to wear special glasses to see them. Why does your technology enable this to look 3D without the glasses? Yeah, right. We have basically, we have, um, we have two displays integrated uh, with one another. And the partner we are working with uh, has integrated this technology already in, in tablets. And it's, it's very, very uh, well known. Uh, meanwhile, in the, in the um, consumer electronic uh, market. And uh, we are now bringing it into the automotive uh, space. And so basically it works with uh, two displays and, um, and, and that uh, the way it works with the cameras and the eye tracking uh, gives you a 3D image uh, which, which uh, without uh, wearing without without the need of wearing uh, special glasses. Yeah, it it looks like parts of the display screen are floating out in front of it, and and if I remember from what you told me back when I first saw it, it's sort of tricking the eye. I mean, obviously, it's not truly three D. The way that you've arranged it just tricks the brain and the eye into thinking that it's floating out in space. It, it does exactly. It's it's basically a, a simulation, if you will, of, of of 3D, 
and it, it yeah if you will it tricks the brain so to speak and uh, and and the the, uh, the the beauty of that is if you think about it you know it's it's when you look at that demo uh, it, it it gives you the impression as if it like it's a center stack uh, display with a console and that's just the the purpose it's just the way we built the demo but think of it in terms of you know individual features for example the uh, the 3D imagery that you can include that in the in the instrument cluster for example and uh, for the better visualization of certain warning you know if you're approaching a car car too too fast or you're getting too close and uh, you know like we have today already in instrument clusters uh, special warnings now you can actually uh, 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 visualize that that warning that alert to the driver by a 3D image which moves towards the driver and, and kind of pops out, you know, and, and we believe that this is a big contribution in terms of safety. Yeah, I, I love to being able to present information to drivers in new and novel ways that are not distracting, really get their attention focused yeah. on what they need to deal with. And go back to that, uh, the ultrasonic uh, uh, array that you've got there, because you're right, uh, in the gesture control in your system, you're getting haptic feedback, even though your hand's not touching anything or your fingers are not touching anything. Yeah, exactly. That's incredible. I mean, you you, you actually have the sensation of, of touching something. And uh, now, now think about nowadays what we are dealing with since a few months now with this uh, coronavirus. So I think we will, uh, I mean, not that we thought of this <laughs> kind of situation, but think of it like uh, maybe people are more hesitant to touch something and if you think of uh, future vehicles more and more car sharing so you're getting into a vehicle which somebody else has been in and if you don't need to touch surfaces uh, that's a beautiful uh, enabling technology to prevent that from from doing you know and um, and then also you know sometimes you have maybe greasy fingers or you just touch something and you don't want to touch your screen and you don't want to lean forward you know so think of it this application as it was shown in the display or as we show it in the display that's Think of it, it's on the driver, on the passenger side, right? Uh, and, and the passenger doesn't need to lean forward all the way towards the display. So he can just, he or she can just, uh, you know, uh, reach toward it with the arm. And then, uh, you know, before you know it, you don't even need to move your upper body. And then you can actually activate some functions. That's beautiful. No, that's a great point. I, I got to believe the, the designers are going to love it too, because there's nothing more annoying than getting into a car with a big screen in the middle of the dash. And it's got fingerprints all over it. It looks ugly that way. Exactly. And another application, another use case, if you think of it, would be uh, rear seat entertainment. You know, playing a 3D movie for the kids, you know, on long journeys. So that's really, uh, it, it has a lot of uh, different aspects to it. And I would say uh, different use cases, you know. Yeah. Obviously, you've been showing this to different automakers. What's the reaction that you're getting? It's quite remarkable. So we showed it first time, um, an earlier version we showed uh, at the 2019 uh, CES in Las Vegas. Uh, we had a private uh, private suite um, on, uh, by invitation only. And, uh, and then we showed the next generation of it at the auto show in Frankfurt last year. And uh, earlier this year, we did a big road show here, uh, actually, uh, um, you know, uh, technology shows at the different OEMs. So we were basically at every OEM here in the Detroit area and had, uh, you know, uh, private showings to them. And, um, and that was, uh, the, the feedback was phenomenal. And uh, it's definitely, like you said, also designers, you know, they like it. It's, uh, or certain features of it. It's not just that you, you know, need to take the whole display even with the haptic feedback, but you can take elements of it, you know, and, and integrate that uh, into different, uh, you know, uh, packages, if you will, uh, and, and it provides just a lot of, uh, or the enabling technology is there to implement that in different ways, you know, whether it's rear seat entertainment, whether it's, uh, you know, for visual warnings, uh, in integrated, uh, the 3D image, I mean, integrated into the, into the uh, instrument cluster, for example. Yeah, okay, so they're amazed about it. Did, did you get any orders yet? Not yet. Uh, it doesn't go that quick, right? So <laughs> it takes some time. No, things things have slowed down, uh, unfortunately, for all of us. You know, we are all, all in it together. Uh, but we believe we are very proud of our technology. And, uh, uh, you know, in our humble opinion, we have offered something which we believe the uh, OEMs can use for their future product roadmaps. And uh, we are working on that. So we are still in contact with the OEMs. And um, so I hope things will 
you know, in, the engagement will increase again once we can, you know, uh, start start getting out there again. And uh, but in the meantime, it was not completely silent, but uh, it sparked a lot of interest in the U.S. as well. Yeah. So what? Maybe a couple of years away yet? Well, um, that's a good question. So um, the the display and the camera technology is is definitely ready. So we can go ahead and start an application project, and yeah, within two years, two and a half years, we would be ready to go in production. If we partner up with an OEM, that's definitely uh, feasible. Uh, you know, we have definitely a proof of concept ready and, and validated. And uh, the the mid-air haptic, I would say, takes a little bit longer. So there we need some further development with the, um, the ultrasonic transducers. So that is not completely, uh, let's say, uh, production readiness. Uh, it hasn't reached the state of production readiness, but uh, not too far out, I would say. Yeah, that's okay. Anyway, Jurgen, because we love showing our viewers future technology that isn't there yet. We want them to learn about it first here. Oh, so absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for your time today. Very interesting technology. I've seen it. I've experienced it. Uh, yeah. It's a it's a wow. It, it definitely is. Oh, thank you very much. Well, thank you. It's a great opportunity for us to uh, to be on your show and uh, talking to you is always a pleasure. So thank you very much for having me. Okay. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye bye.